Jesus' brother, Jude, wrote a letter, and it's in the Bible. And in that letter, he warns us about false teachers. He says in Jude, 1, uh, Jude verse 3, Dear friends, although I was very eager Jesus' brother Jude wrote a letter to the church, and it's in our Bible, the book of Jude. And in that, there's just one chapter, he warns about false teachers, and he tells us that we need to make sure we contend for the faith. He says in verse 3, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. So he says we got to be careful that we don't allow the faith to be corrupted for false teachers to come in and, and change what God has delivered to us as the truth. And I think they were having problems with that at the time and we are still having problems f with it today. When you see the false teaching that uh, goes by the name of Christianity on television, very often it's, it's the health and wealth gospel, which is not the gospel of the Bible. The health wealth gospel says, if you have enough faith that you're going to be successful financially, you're going to be healthy all your life, if you get a disease, you will be able to heal it immediately with your faith, and you'll never have problems because of your strong faith. And if you don't have that, then there's something wrong with you in your faith. It basically makes it a sin to be suffering. And the Bible never teaches that. And it's a lie. It was a lie in Job's time. And it's a lie still today. But uh, most of the preachers on television, and I put those preachers in quotes, most of them are health and wealth gospel teachers. And, and they are not teaching the Christian gospel. Uh, I, I don't know if that sounds harsh to you, but I think it's important for us to realize that just because somebody puts a label on that says Christian and calls themselves a pastor or a preacher or a teacher, that doesn't mean that we should believe them. In fact, even the Bible says that the people in the city of Berea were noble because they didn't just accept what the apostles said, but they went to God's word to see if what they were saying was true. So we've got to watch out for false teachers. And just because somebody's a pastor and says that they're a Christian, it doesn't mean that we should believe what they say. We should check it out with God's Word. You shouldn't believe what I say without checking it out with God's Word. He goes on to say, For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only Sovereign and Lord. So anybody who denies that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, or that he came in bodily form and gave his life and was resurrected, uh, and now is uh, the path for our grace to save us from our sins, anybody who rejects that, they're a false teacher. Anybody who takes that grace, though, and turns it into a license for immoral living, they're a false teacher as well. But there are also people who, they have the right doctrine, but then their life doesn't live up to that doctrine. I think about pastors like Bill Hybels and, and Ravi Zacharias, people that I have admired and, and really appreciate their, their teachings. But it, in the end, it turns out they're false teachers. Not because what they said publicly was untrue, just because somebody's a false teacher doesn't, mean, doesn't negate everything they said as being untrue. Maybe they said a lot of true things, but their life did not stand up to what they were preaching. And, and you know what? As Christians, we are witnesses not just with our words, but with the way we live our lives. And so our, our doctrine has to be right, straight from God's word. And our life should be right as well. We got to be careful that uh, you know we don't succumb to one of the sins of our culture is celebrity worship. 
And a lot of times where we want to have some celebrity pastors and teachers that we can, we can worship them. And a lot of times we get in trouble because uh, we put all of our faith in people instead of putting our faith in God. Um, God has kept me humble. I'm, I'm not a celebrity. I think you all know that. But you know that I'm accessible to you. I hope that that's a good thing for you. I hope that the fact that you can pick up a phone and call me um, counts for something. The fact that uh, I share my life with you and I let you know maybe my weaknesses as well as try to show my strengths, um, I hope that that counts for something as well. I want to live my life in a way that would glorify Christ as much as my words would. And I hope that that's your goal as well. Let's live for Christ and proclaim him with our words. Let's pray. Father, we pray for those who are false teachers, that they would be convicted and that they would change, that they would um, come to you and be saved, and that that would make a difference in other people's lives. And I pray for all of us, Father. We, None of us measures up perfectly, but I pray that more and more we will grow into the gospel that you have given to us. Father, thank you for putting up with us. Thank you for forgiving us, and thank you for changing us by your Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. As, as one uh, sinner made into a saint by the grace of God says to another sinner saved by grace, I love you. Let's, let's do this Christian pilgrimage together, and let's see how we can change this world in the name of Jesus. God bless you all.